Welcome everybody to 52 Living Ideas. Tonight we'll be covering Confucius. Uh, generally speaking, we usually have one or two readings of the verses that we uh, that we cover, and then we'll open it up, uh, or we'll have Jason read his version, his translation, and then we'll open it up for comments. Um, so we just ask that you keep your comments uh, to the text, at least for the uh, for the first one, uh, two thirds of the meeting, and uh, we'll open it up for more of a free flow discussion uh, at the end. Uh, so would anybody like to read uh, their version of the Analects? Okay, I can read um, from Charles Muller. Mm -hmm. 1441, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, the master say, if those in power love propriety, the people will be easy to manage. 1442, Zilu. Ask about the qualities of the noble man. Confucius say he cultivates himself by comforting others. Is that all? He cultivates himself by comforting everyone. Now this is something that even Yao and Shang, Shang, Xiu, I think Xiu found difficult. Fourteen forty three. Yuan Nang was waiting for the master in sprawl out position. Confucius said to be young and not act like a junior, to be mature and have nothing to pass on, to get old and not die. A parasite. He whacked himself on the shins with his staff. Uh, one more, please. One more? Yeah. 1444? Yeah, that's the last one. Okay. A boy from the village of Ch Chie was working as a messenger. Someone asked Confucius, is he developing? Confucius said, I can see that he likes to sit in the grown-up place and like to be buddies with his elders, but he is not seeking to develop himself. He wants to grow up too quickly. So is anyone want to read another version of translation? I can read the Eno if you want. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, so 1441, the master said that when the ruler loves the Li, the people are easy to employ. 1442, Zulu asked about the Junzi. The master said, cultivate in yourself respectful attentiveness. Is that all there is to it? Cultivate yourself to bring comfort to others. Is that all there is to it? Cultivate yourself to bring comfort to the people. Cultivating oneself to bring comfort to the people, even Yao and Shun themselves would fall short of that. 1443, Yuan Ran sat waiting with his legs across, the master said. As a youth, this disobedient and disrespectful to your elders, as an adult, accomplishing nothing worth speaking of, old and still not dead, nothing but a thief. And he struck him on the shin with his staff. 14.44. A boy from Chur, a boy from the Chur district was acting as a messenger and someone asked about him, is he likely to improve? The master said, I have noticed that he sits himself in company and walks directly alongside his enders. He's not seeking improvement. He's after quick results. Thank you, Kwon, and thank you, Joey. And, uh, uh, okay, so that's, uh, Amang is not here, and I'm going to 
share the uh, work uh, between Amang and myself. <clears throat> 1441, the master said, when those, up, when those above lot D, which is riches, the people are easy to manage. The uh, Chinese word used ease, easy to manage, manage, okay. or you want to call it uh, employee. Okay. 42, Zilu asked about Junzi. The master said, cultivate yourself and be respectful. Then Zilu said, is that all? The master said, cultivate yourself and bring peace to others. Zilu said, is that all? The master said, cultivate yourself bring, and bring peace to all people. Even the ancient sages, Yao and the Sun decked for that kind of achievement. Um, I think only Zidu, I, 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 I always almost laugh on these verses because only Zidu uh, will keep asking, right? When Confucius answered, Zidu said, that's all, that's all, that's all. So eventually Confucius had to say, that's enough. Even the ancient sage king, like Yao and the Sun, cannot achieve this. Then ask him to shut up. Fourteen forty-three, Yuan Rang. Okay. Yuan Rang is Confucius' old friend, and I believe he is a Taoist. So. Uh, according to the account, he didn't cry when his mother died. So, but remember, Yuan Zhang is not a student. He is a uh, Confucius friend. So Yuan Zhang, uh, Chinese word called Yi Si. Okay. Yi Si is, means he sit down with his, sit down on the floor and with his leg wide open. Okay. So, uh, in the ancient Chinese time, people don't wear the men or wear skirt, and then uh, they don't wear underpants. So you sit down and have your leg open. In general, it's a very comfortable position, but you know it's very uh, disrespectful. So I believe the at that time has no chair. So the proper way to waiting for people either stand up or even you have to on your knee like a Japanese, you know, uh, during, uh, in today. So uh, Yuan Zhang sat with his leg wide open while waiting uh, Confucius coming. Uh, I think Yuan Zhang said this because he first, he's Taoist, so not so respectful about the ritual. And secondly, Confucius is his old friend. But the master said, being young and not obedient, being senior and having nothing worth speaking of, being old and not dying, you are a thief of virtue. With that, Confucius knock him on the shin with his step. So some people may take us this one as Confucius is doing corporal, uh, corporal uh, punishment by hitting the person. If you see Yuan Zhang, his student, but I don't see this way, but um, I think it kind of like, you know, the way to treat your friend, say, hey, come on, that's not the right way to do it. And then use his, his uh, start to knock him. Okay. So kind of the health joking, health reminding, that, that's my reading. Uh, last one for book 14, uh, chapter 44. The boy from the place of Chi walk as a messenger. Someone asked, does he improve himself? The master said, I see him seated himself with others and see him walk alongside with elders. He's not improving himself. He seek quick result. So basically Confucius is talking about just a comment about this kid, this young boy. He just pretend, he just mimic the behavior of the senior, of the people on the higher position, 
uh, not really learning the essence of a uh, 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 ritual or uh, uh, things. So that's all for book 14. And then uh, since Amang is not here, and I believe uh, uh, if anyone have a question or any comment, please. Yeah. So I'll stop here for book 14. So we'll open it up to questions. Uh, if anybody would like to make more comments, um, go ahead, Juan. Uh, here, I think that 14.42 is very interesting. And uh, in a certain manner, it is linked with what we discussed last time, OK? Uh, uh, I think that uh, I said last time that uh, Confucianism produced a lot of clumsy nerds that are not very appropriate when they talk about uh, the real reality of life and of being streetwise. And I think that once again, that chapter 14 is outstanding for, for addressing that problem. And 14.42 for is really good for that in the sense that Sometimes uh, in Confucianism, when you are speaking of the ideal okay, of the Junzu, or of the Chengran, of the sage kings or the sage, uh, uh, people tend to exaggerate, okay, tend to amplify the qualities and the stuff that you, they need to do in order to deserve uh, the label of gentleman or of sage. And uh, when Confucius said at the last that cultivate yourself to bring comfort to the people, it means that you would bring peace to the world, okay? That, that, that is something so outstanding that not everyone would be capable to accomplish or to achieve it because the two examples he gave, Yao and Shun, uh, were two sage kings of the past that are kinds of uh, archetypes of uh, sage kings. So here, uh, what I find in chapter 14, that there is a lot of common sense that has been... Uh, elaborated and I would say that at the end of chapter 14 that paragraph 14.42 is outstanding in the sense that it brought back that common sense reality in a uh, humorous manner okay because it's took like a serious but it's like a kind of it's, it's humorous and the next one 43 is like the vignette that is exactly the opposite of 42, okay? Meaning that Confucius is meeting one of his own body, one of his own bodies, and uh, that own body's uh, own body apparently was quite lazy and did not accomplish anything according to the Confucianist ideal. And uh, he was just teasing him, uh, saying, well, you know, sometimes with your own bodies, you can have... Uh, uh, language that is a little bit direct uh, on bordering on uh, rudeness, okay? But he was talking to, to an old buddy, saying to him, well, you know, you did, did not accomplish anything interesting in your life, uh, and he gave, gave him a little stroke at the end. So uh, once again, it's humorous, okay? And that, the, that vignette from at 43 is exactly the uh, the complementary vignette for 42, okay? Because in 42, it's a student that is a little bit too on the verge of being a, a nerd, okay? Asking question uh, for something ideal, but a little bit pushed too far. And in the next vignette, you have an old body of Confucius embodying exactly the reverse. So it has been done with a lot of humor. And the last one, 44, it's about a young boy, okay? So you have a young man, an old man, and a young boy, and exactly around the idea, what would be the ideal behavior. And let's not forget that 41, the first of the four vignettes, started with a general statement, okay? That when the ruler loves Li, the people are easy to employ. Meaning that once again, Li is the proposition, and I insist on the word, okay, it's, it's not compulsory, it's the proposition, uh, trying to have a behavior that is not too far-fetched in one side, too idealistic, or not too far-fetched on the other side, too down to earth. Uh, I want to remind everyone that one of the four books is precisely Chong Yong, 
the doctrine of the mean, okay? Trying to be as balanced as possible. I stop here. Yeah, thank you, Kwang, for uh, bringing the 42, 43 uh, the relation. And then uh, I, I, one thing important I forget to mention is uh, in uh, chapter 42, right? When Zhu asks about Jun's Confucius answer is cultivate yourself and be respectful. And then he talk about cultivate yourself and bring peace to others. Then he said, cultivate yourself and bring peace to all people. That reflects uh, Confucius, typical Confucian moral teacher. Confucius hardly tell like a big draw, a big picture and very difficult to achieve. Yeah, everything you should be able to start by yourself, depend on your quality and your luck, let's put it so. Do you have an opportunity to do that or not? So, learn uh, benevolence or uh, be a richer, okay, and be a jinzi, uh, be everything, right? You all start from yourself, then grow to the people around you and the bigger and the bigger. So it reminds us about the uh, the great learning, okay, a step, okay, step by step, you cultivate yourself, then extend it to your family, to your neighborhood, to your state, then to the entire world. That's all over the place in the all Confucius logic, always from small and the gradually, organically grow big. So that's the uh, very typical Confucius, Confucius a Confucian teacher. Thank you, Jason. Are there any other comments? Uh, Joy. Yes, I I uh, really like the uh, um, Jason's uh, translation in the fourteen forty three, but there's one question, one sentence I'm not quite quite understand though. The um the last one, um, your um. Can, can I see the translation one more time? In Chinese, there's a law, er I, I don't I don't think they in in our um thinking the uh, it's like a thief. I, I think in the translation is very, very good. But just the 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 main uh like a philosophy in this sentence I I kinda question and uh, kinda confusing. You know, because so, usually we see the elderly or the um old people or senior people is uh, like a treasure or the jewel. They have a wisdom. They have they are really really have a lot of experience and uh, knowledge. So I think it's like a special precious treasure. But here I don't understand why Confucius say is the thief. Uh, let, let me give my answer on this. Okay, so uh. Yeah, that's usually in Chinese saying in during the uh daily conversation, I think okay. That's a common saying when we complain or talking about some people, right? I don't want to mention some okay, somebody very old, still occupy the position and not doing thing. We will say uh growing old and not dying, it's a sick. Okay, so that becomes a common saying. That's the first thing. But that's back to the original sentence on this chapter, right? He's talking to Yuan Rang. Okay, Yuan Rang, that's a son. He is a Confucius old friend, okay, old body. So, and then let's take, a, so that kind of, right, we can consider as health joking, okay, health complaining, health joking. That's the second thing we can think about. Okay, let's go back to the logical and the, the <clears throat> moral meaning. Confucius said, being young and not obedient. He's talk about he is probably his friend. Is, that, that's assume he's old friend and he is kind of a Taoist. Okay, so he's not following Li when he was young. Okay, so he probably disobedient, probably means he doesn't do a lot of respectable ritual to his father and according to historical account, even his mother died, he didn't cry, okay? So he he's not obedient. And he's seen when he grow old, he, 
he doesn't achieve anything. That means he probably didn't do any government job and to, you know, educate people, something like this. And then right now you are old and you still live it. Okay. Bus, in a way, we say not dying, but in another way, we can say you still live it in this old age. And it's a seal, seed, okay, a seed. I put a, a printed seal here, it's a seed of virtue. Let's bring back to the basic assumption of Confucian ideal life. You live a life, you have a purpose. You need to bring positive work to this world, right? When I was born, I was young, I learned, then I have to con contribute to this world, which is virtue. I should give to this world. If I live in this life, I'm totally waste. In Confucius' point of view, you are sick, okay? Because your mother, your father give you a lot of things, your society, your country give you a lot of things. You didn't give to anything. So in a way, you are steal this virtue from the world. So that's Confucius' logic on this. So uh, that's my understanding on this one. I hope it makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Are there any other comments or any other themes that people had uh, picked up on that they wish to speak about or share any thoughts on? Uh, go ahead, uh, Quan. Okay, here. Uh, I'm a little bit in the same uh, direction than Jason, but I just want to add that when he was uh, accusing his friend Yuan Ran to be a thief, I, I think there are many layers. And I think that it's true that in China and even in the West, okay, when an old man is uh, still having a position and that the younger man would, uh, would judge that he's not doing nothing. Well, even in the West, uh, we would call that guy a thief or something equivalent to a thief, okay? a bandit uh, or something like that. So I think that that's some, something universal. But uh, maybe at the epistemological, which is one of my obsessions, uh, a thief, since uh, Yuan Ran was a Taoist and he was not going to the epistemological grove as Confucianists define it or as the Chow Royal House define it in the classics, uh, uh, Yuan Ran is perceived according to that Confucian standard that he was stealing himself from the possibility to advance epistemologi epistemologically first and at the second layer, that not being advanced epistemologically as defined by the Confucian standard, that of course it is debatable, he also is stealing his sovereign and his society of a contribution that he could have given if had he uh, developed himself epistemologically speaking. I stop here. Any other comments uh, regarding any of these? Nick, please. Yeah, so maybe just uh, just a short uh, a thought to, to share on um, uh, verse 42. Sure. Uh, so when you read this, uh, it's a repetitive questioning by a pupil of the master right he, he the people asked a question and the master answered but the pupil came back again you know is that all and then he answered again then the pupil came back again so he, is that all so this is a this is a one of the one of the <clears throat> comments that people often make about confucius you know what depths does his thinking have <laughs> he usually say very short sentences that, and the people felt that you know there, there's a, there should be a, some more depth into the thinking, and uh, so this has been one of the reactions to his the thinking that uh, they are no no more than just a collection of uh, practical wisdom. So you know anybody with a reflective mind, uh, living so live would have it. So I just find that interesting. Even even his pupils uh, wanted to know <laughs> something more. 
I like mine. Uh, I want to piggyback on what Nick just said, okay? Because there is a lot of sentences in the uh, analex that can be that can provoke that kind of answer, automatic answer or spontaneous answer. Is that all there is to it? Uh, and it's but what I want to say is that sometimes there are sentences who which looks very simplistic. But what is difficult is not the theoretical elaboration, it's the embodiment of that sentences in every circumstances of your life. For example, cultivate in yourself respectful attentiveness. Uh, it looks very uh, nerdy at the first level, but uh, if you ask to yourself, uh, do you have respectful attentiveness in your life? Uh, and that would be the difficult stuff to do. But I would say that if you want uh, elaborate uh, theoretical considerations, uh, you need to read more the other three of the four books, meaning the Mencius, the Chong Yong, and the Tashui. Chong Yong meaning the doctrine of the mean, and the Tashui, the great learning. I stop here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's actually true of a lot of texts. Uh, in general, um, I think in if you were to read Marcus Aurelius's meditations, uh, that would be something similar where you'd feel that where patience, it's his thoughts, you know, inner thoughts that he's, and so it turns into how he's feeling, what he's trying to communicate, what he's struggling with. Uh, but they're often short, sometimes some are longer than others, entries where you do have to extract the practical it's i you know i think that some of these texts uh to say something uh succinctly and still be able to get the message across i think is is a is a very difficult thing to do um so i think it does force you to to interpret um uh, it does force you to interpret uh, quite a bit, but uh, at the same time, uh, I think that uh, the way we're going through it often leads to, uh, you know, uh, some very deep uh, uh, revelations, if you will. Uh, uh, Jason. Yeah, let, let me um, uh, share my view on this kind of sometimes short answer, sometimes long answer. Uh, I have no objection from Quan's point of view. We have to read everything, understand everything. That, that's perfectly right. But I, I more look at on the historical uh, situation because uh, all these books are compiled by Confucius' disciples' disciple. Okay, so really depend on how much we remember, how much the writer want to write. So we really don't know what's the actual situation. That's number one. Number two, depend on the personality of the disciple, right? Like Zi Lu, we know, Zi Lu is probably only nine years younger than Confucius. He always alongside with Confucius. So he had the Confucius kind of like a body body. So he, hey, that's all, that's all, that's all. So that could be the case here, like the Zi Zhang, Okay, much younger. May not say that when Confucius say something, he just. I think later on we'll see. He just write it down. Okay, <laughs> okay. So uh, that depends on the editor and depends on the personality on that. So that's the the way I view it. So uh, I I uh, just like to share with you. Uh, Mark. Thanks, Joseph. Uh it seems as if Zilu, in asking, is this all, is this all, that he knows that Confucius is not giving all his knowledge at once, that he's, he's not sharing everything. And does Zilu know that the master is too modest to share all of his knowledge at once? Uh, let me have a quick response on that. Just, just my opinion. I don't see, I don't think uh, Confucius will withhold what he knows 
and because the market, he tried to be modest, uh, be, be, be moderate. But I think Confucius have a, 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 a style of uh, telling different people different things. If you are not that smart, he will not tell you calculus. He only tell you the, uh, the multiple tables. And you know, so I think that's the number one. And Confucius is probably more focused on what you can do, not on what you think about, what do you know. So it, that could be the case. But again, uh, that's just my the way I read it. So that's it. Uh, if, if I may make a brief comment, I think that if you read what he says, you know, how to cultivate himself so as to give uh, rest to others. That's, that's all. I think that that if <laughs> that's an I mean, that's a very deep concept to contemplate. If saying that's all, I make me wonder if he's actually comprehending what actually Confucius is saying, because you would might think that there would be deeper questions following. Um, Anyway, because I think that those types of, what does that exactly mean? Uh, what types of, you know, what kind of, of and he's saying that's it? Um, well, that's a pretty big statement, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, to cultivate himself so as to give re rest to all people, all the people. And he's, you know, I mean, that seems like a pretty big order. And he's still saying that's all. I, I find that to be um, that a lack of, I don't know, questioning? Go ahead, Juan. Juan. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I would like to say that 42, 43, and 44 can be uh, labeled as the three paragraphs of the bodies, okay? Because Zulu was uh, 10 years younger than Confucius and among his disciples, Zulu has a special place, okay? The relation between the two, Confucius and Zulu, can be said as the relation between two bodies. And when, and he, Zulu has also a, a spontaneous character, okay? Uh, almost impulsive. So, but Zulu was a, I would say, a, an accomplished state man because uh, he was uh, participating in politics in a clever, skillful manner most of the time not as accomplished than uh, Zukong, for example, because Zukong was a younger disciple, maybe 25 to 30 years younger than Confucius. And Zukong was an outstanding ambassador to many principalities and played an outstanding role in politics at the time. But we cannot say that Zulu was a complete nerd. He was a truly, uh, let's say, accomplished statesman. But at the same time, uh, we have the characters uh, th that we have, okay? Zulu was spontaneous and Zulu was impulsive. And he also has a special position of being Confucius' body uh, within the circle of the Confucius' uh, disciples. So we have the body at 42. You have a, an even closer body at 43 because Zulu is... 10 years younger than Confucius, but I suspect that Yuan Ran must have exactly the same age as Confucius, or maybe a difference of one to two years at the most. And you have at the last uh, paragraph 44, a boy acting as if he is the body of his enders. So I would say that the three paragraphs are very funny because I call them the paragraph of the bodies. And I would say that it gave a touch of fun and once again, I said that this chapter 14 is addressing precisely uh, the problem of uh, the nerds within Confucianism. That is, it brings a lot of fun and of uh, comedic vignettes, if I want to say it. I stop here. Thank you, uh, Paul. And then we'll go on to the next reading. Kevin also had a hand up. So after Kevin. Oh, Kevin, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Paul, can you unmute? 
Oh, look, guys, we have the sound problem. Okay, so you okay, Kevin? Yeah, yeah. I follow up on the Mark question. That's a good question. I would like the bigger scope. Of what's different uh, uh, Western and Eastern? Like here, like I feel Confucius has, Confucius has never give you a firm answer. Like that's he like give you all knowledge. That's everything change growing, but comparable. For example, he used a uh, one if you cultivate yourself, you can you know uh, what's followed. Um, you can uh, cultivate yourself, then satisfy others. What's what step by step? But and his ideal is uh, module would be yo, and soon it's uh, basically two kingdom pre century where. Uh, it's a focus on their people, rather than themselves. So it, it's a very, that's a great question, keeping in mind. I, I, I'll let that start jumping in, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Paul, it seems like your sound's back. Yeah. Or... yeah, I couldn't, my mouse wouldn't work to get to my unmute, but now it's back. Um, so I wonder, I, want, I would be interested if you guys, how, what do you think of the idea that these ideas of, of well, is that all? Is, all, is that all? Um, and the general criticism, I think Nick might have brought up, brought up, um, isn't is missing some point because if there's one, I guess I'll call it epistemology theory of knowledge of that is underneath everything that Confucius talks about. Well, he's not here to teach that. He's here to teach right action, all the ways of acting in the world that result from it. And so it might sound like there's not much underneath it, but there's a huge amount underneath it. But that's not his mission right now. Just a thought, proposal. Yeah, very good. And that is actually one of the things that I've taken away, and especially coming back to these uh, 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 passages to specifically uh, after we had we had taken a break is that you can see a little bit more clearly where Confucius is his instruction of his students you start to see the cultivated of uh, virtue within that so this extract uh you know the the meaning uh from from yeah anyway so we'll go to Nick then on we'll, we'll definitely move on to the next okay quickly uh, before moving on just want to uh, respond to paul's comment uh i was actually thinking about hegel hegel had this criticism of uh, confucianism basic saying there's nothing you know except a collection of uh, practical wisdom so there's a lacking of structure either epistemologically or or ontologically you know that would uh, would uh, give the impression of being a philosophical framework uh, so I think this is a this is a one of the one of the sort of the commentary uh, about the Confucius and the pushback has been well you know the Chinese have a different way of thinking about things uh yeah. Like uh, in the, I think in the 18th century in Europe, there was a sort of a, a school of common sense philosophy, right? Which said, look, you know, why get into all those nitty gritties which makes no sense and nobody knows whether they are right or wrong. Let's just go with common sense. And that should dictate, you know, our, our uh, epistemology, our ethics, uh, whatever. Uh, but I think that, that school of thought sort of disappeared after a while. It really doesn't capture the imagination of philosophical uh, reflection. So I guess this is the where the you know sort of the the, the, the why interpretation of Oriental thought. Um, yeah, but uh, but it's a it's a long debate. I don't think we can resolve that. But just want to make that. I just thought the verse forty two was interesting, even at the time of Confucius. You know, there's some noise about uh, is there anything more. Uh, Go on. Okay, in, 
I will be very short, okay? It's the difference between role models and a teacher, okay? A teacher of all kind of theoretical considerations and those theoretical considerations exist at the time of Confucius, okay? Because I want to be uh, clear here in the Shu Yi, which is the epistemological appendix of the Ji Qing, you have those uh, deeper epistemological and ontological considerations, which were discussed within the school of Confucius and with the Ta Shui, the great learning, and uh, the Chong Yong, which is uh, the doctrine of the mean. But however, I would agree totally with what has been said in the last five minutes. Here, Confucius is stressing the fact that he is a role model for statesman, and there is no need to, to, to go too much into theoretical epistemological considerations. And I finish with the fact that I, I, I would bet that Hegel never read the Shu Yi, and the Ta Shui, and the Chong Yong to have that kind of criticism. I stop here. All right, so, so let's go. Okay. See, uh, Kong, uh, which book you talk about Shu Yi? Uh, uh, the Shu Yi, the Shu Yi, the Ten Winds, okay? The oh, philosophical. Okay, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. I mispronounced the Shu Yi, the Ten Winds. Okay, so uh, we will go on to book 15 now. Okay, yeah, we finish uh, 14, then we're going to 15. Okay, the title is uh, Wei Ling Gong, Duke Ling of Wei. So. so would anybody like, wh what numbers would you well, like? Let's, to let's read the first two, okay, uh, 15, okay. One, 15, two. Would anybody like to read their version? Uh, I'm fine with reading. Uh, I can read the Eno. Uh, I don't know if Joy wants to read her version. Yeah. Okay, I can read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 15 um, first. Um, Duke Ling of Wei asked Confucius about military tactics. Um, Confucius said, I know about the handling of uh, ritual sacrifice, but I have not studied strategy. 15.2. The next day, he and his disciple continued their travel. By the time they got to Chen, um, they had run out of the food, and Zilu was obviously angry about it. He said, must the noble man suffer such poverty? Confucius said, the noble man remains stable when in poverty, the inferior man falls apart. Thank you, Joy. Uh, fun. Okay, so I read the Inu translation, 15.1. Juk Ling of Wei questioned Confucius about battlefield formations. Confucius replied, when it comes to matters of sacrificial vessels, I have some learning. I have never studied military affairs. The next day he departed. 15.2. In Chang, the supplies of food were exhausted and the followers fell so ill that none could rise from bed. Zhu Lu appeared before the master with a bitter expression. May even a Chun Zhu fall to the depths of poverty. The master said, the Chun Zhu holds steadfast through poverty. When the small man falls into poverty, he wouldn't do anything. Oh, very different version. Uh, go ahead, Jason. Okay, 15. Okay, so uh, just a quick note. Um, traditionally, each book could be have a different author, okay? a different disciple right there. So that's a different book. And then the title of the book usually use the first two or three uh, words okay, as the, uh, the, 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 the name of the chapter. So uh, just by something that happened, the first word is Wei Ling Gong. So uh, <clears throat> this book called uh, Wei Ling Gong, or sometimes, I think sometimes they just call Wei Ling. Okay, so uh, which translates as Duke Ling of Wei. Uh, 
which is the uh, when Confucius in exile in the state of Wei, he tried to get a job over there, but he failed. Then he had to leave and to the state of Chen, that's another neighboring state, and he suffered over there. That's why I would like to read these two together, and I think these two are important because it describes the story. So, Duke Ling of Wei asked Confucius about the military formation. Uh, here, Wen Chen, okay, actually is Zhen, that means formation, military. Confucius replied, important thing is here we call Dui. It doesn't have a, the master set because when Confucius talked to the Duke, he replied, he doesn't say, he doesn't behave as a master. So Confucius replied, I know how to handle sacrificial vessels, but have not learned military affair. Then he departed the next day with his disciple, I put in the uh, parenthesis, he left. So actually 15, the, ch the next chapter is a continuous from the chapter one, because after he left the state of Wei, then he arrived at the state of Chen, right? When they arrived in the state of Chen, the supply of food will run out, they're hungry. The follower was sick and unable to get up. Zidu, okay, so again, his attitude is different. He tried to challenge Confucius or complain. Zidu was unhappy. He appeared before Confucius and said, does a Junzi also reach a predicament like this? Remember on the previous book, uh, Zidu asked about Junzi. Okay, so here it hints, right? He said, we are sick. We are unable to stand up, right? Let's assume Confucius told him the day before, okay, in book 14, okay, a Junzi will cultivate yourself and give peace to others and to the all the people. But right now, the Junzi you are talking about, forget about uh, 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 cultivate yourself, be, 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 be respectable, okay? You also cannot survive. So, Zidu has said that the Junzi also reach a predicament like this. Okay, and the Confucius answer. So here he worked as a speaker, as a master. So he doesn't reply. Master said, okay. the Junzi holds his principle through a predicament. The small man act indiscriminately in a predicament. So I think the these words become a very important uh, teaching okay, in the Chinese uh, tradition of, because of what's the Junzi, the opposite, non Junzi, the opposite of Junzi is the Xiao Ren, small man. We can reach as a common people, not really a bad people, a common people. So the words he used is Gu, and actually I should translate as a stubborn. But I don't want to give a negative meaning. So uh, uh, we, uh, Aban and me, will decide to use the Junzi holds his principle through a, pre a predicament. And the, the, the small man acts indiscriminately uh, in a predicament. Actually, that means none. Lan, uh, this word means like flood. So if you have the river run over the place, that means you can do whatever you want to do. You can call it abusive or you can call it randomly. Okay. So without principle. So the difference between Junzi and a small man is a Junzi, even in the difficult situation, the Junzi will hold his own position, his own principle. But a small man will do whatever can do to survive. I think that's the key teaching on this one, uh, book, uh, chapter one and chapter two. Thank you. So we will open it up for questions or for comments now, uh, if anybody has a comment um, about either of these passages. Um, go ahead and raise your hand or type exclamation point in the chat.
Go ahead, Juan. Uh, here, I would like to, to add an historical note, okay? Uh, when Confucius uh, began his exile from 497 uh, BCE, uh, he went to Wei, that principality where the Duke of uh, Duke Ling was the sovereign, uh, because uh, Zhu Lu uh, had a brother in law having a property in Wei, the Wei principality, which is the principality just west of the Lu principality. And during that 14 years long exile from 497 BCE to 484 BCE, Confucius would go back to Wei quite frequently to have a kind of break of pause uh, before going to a new principality, trying to persuade its sovereign to listen to his political advice and to implement some reforms. So when, the, when it's written that the next day he departed, uh, we need not to take it as a definitive uh, departure, okay, because he wouldn't come back quite often to the Wei Principality to have some breaks during his 14 years old, uh, for, no, sorry, 14 years long exile. Uh, so, uh, and the other one, 15.2, uh, the famous incident between the Principality of Cheng and the Principality of Tsai, when Confucius has been a, a uh, corner uh, in, in up on the hill uh, because he resembled to a guy a phys that he resembled physically to a guy uh, who uh, caused a havoc in that principality uh, some years before. I think that the guy to which he resembled physically was Yang Hu. And uh, that's why the inhabitants of that place, the principality of Tsai, corner him up on the hill and they, they stay there maybe for two or three weeks. So that's why they almost starved to death. And it was thanks to Zhu Kong, uh, the very resourceful disciples of, this, of Confucius, that they managed to get out of that trap. And at the end, the inhabitants of Tsai uh, realized that uh, Confucius was only resembling to Yang Hu and was not Yang Hu. I stop here. Are there any other comments or regarding one, number one, or number two? Go ahead. Uh, I don't know if it was Nick or Kevin. Uh, go ahead, Hi, Nick. Nick. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, did we read verse three, Joe, Joseph? I'm sorry? Did, did we? Read three or, or no? No, no. Oh, no. just the first two. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, uh, so, so I, I, uh, I find those two interesting. Uh, so verse one gave me the impression that Confucius was uh, very professional. He, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't like a sophist trying to sell his uh, his stuff to to anybody listening. You know, to 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 have audience with the duke uh, was uh, was quite an opportunity, but he said, "Look, uh, you know, he, he was he wasn't going to 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 to, to tailor his uh, his advice uh, to the need of uh, the customer, basically. You know, that's so, because the duke wanted to know how to how to have a good army, how to fight, uh, but he but Confucius stick to his uh, his teaching, <laughs> his profession. But I find that interesting. He wasn't." Just trying to cultivate the access and then try to influence, uh, uh, which uh, many many of the you know others would have done. Uh, the the second verse. Uh, this is a this is really the answer to the usual question or the or the nowadays question. You are, if you are so rich, why are you, you are, if you are so smart, why are you not rich? Uh, so you know, if you have, if you are so righteous, uh, and then why why you end up like this? Uh, I mean, Zulu, again, this the pupil, is kind of very very rebellious. Uh, um, so yeah, so I, I make the connection to that uh, the question. Even today, we often ask. Yeah. 
Thank you, Nick. Uh, yeah, I find verse one pretty interesting. Maybe I'll share my comments in a moment, um, especially uh, in the version that I have. I've heard all about sacrificial vice, uh, vessels. That's what he says uh, at one point. Sacrificial vessels are I just it's interesting to think of it, how Confucius framed it in that way. Um, let, let me respond. Uh, oh, let me respond to your quick uh, question quick quicker. Yeah. That's a that's a question I had about this. Usually talk about the actually word he used is zu do. Okay. That means on the table with the vessel. So he he used this word. I just direct translate translate as uh, a sacrificial vessel. I think the Muller has a different translation. They basically it means ritual. So Confucius specialized in rituals, okay? Right. Not in military operation. That's what he's talking about. He doesn't just talk about, oh, just the thing, but he just humbly say, I know how to arrange all these sacrificial vessels, but what he meant, I am expert on rituals. I'm not expert in military operation. I'm Confucius, not Sun Tzu. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, I think that that's an important distinction. Thank you. Uh, Quan. Uh, I think oh, I wait a minute. Ke take Kevin. Kevin, all oh, right. I think it was okay, Kevin. Not a Kevin, it's to be I speak. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I actually follow Jason's comment uh, about it. It, it confuses his specialized about the Li ritual and the he against the war. It's between his period of time and still, if you research uh, the internet wiki page, at 1.5 billion people during the warring state, it's just passed away. That, that's a big. Yeah, if, that I also from that list, uh, even after uh, a little bit over our side of three kingdoms, also is eighty percent of population it is passed away. We you know related to war, so that he know the answer. I would say war cannot solve the problem. So and but his idea it makes sense. It's you know still he pursue the second uh, passage about. Yes, how can you can when you get poor, you have no food. What can you do? So his answer is, yeah, I would stay as my as poor rather than you know do something. Uh, it's not a follower of me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm absolutely uh, in agreement with with what everything that has been said that the sacrificial vessels is a symbol for rituals, but at the same time, uh, he apparently uh, lower himself uh, to a mere teacher of rituals, but at the same time, when someone is saying that he knows something about the matters of sacrificial vessels or of sacrifices, it also has the undertone that he wants to give advice to the administration of the state, okay? Because in a broader meaning, because uh, uh, the rituals to the ancestors and so on is can be used as the metaphor, as uh, the uh, encompassing uh, role of the state and the doctrine or the philosophy that is uh, under that uh, role of the state, meaning the art of the ruler. And, uh, the military formation, formations is only a technical branch of uh, the encompassing art of the ruler. So uh, it's also maybe a polite way to say to the Dukling of way that I'm not, uh, I'm not a technician give you, giving you practical advices, but I want to give you a program of reform that would be much, much, much broader and much, much, much more encompassing. And the next 1.2 uh, is a paragraph that has been used uh, very often in the life of the scholars in the history of the Chinese empire to uh, give them a spine, meaning that uh, the gentleman, uh, even in poverty, will not uh, forget uh, 
the uh, teaching of the epistemological growth. And uh, you will find a lot of uh, sentences in the analects that can be very useful in difficult times or for anyone in China. I stop here. Yeah, I mean, I found that actually number um, two to be interesting as well. I found both of them to be interesting. I also think that there is an element of humility that's being showed, shown in uh, in number one. Uh, and I also, with uh, outgoing in the detail, we could talk about that a little bit later. Uh, with number two, as you just said, I think remaining uh, upright despite the circumstances that you are in uh, is what's really kind of being communicated and those that are uh, that are lesser men do not uh, maintain uh, their integrity and in, in difficult uh, in facing difficulties. So it's all about fortitude. I would look at it as uh, you know that's the way I look at number two. Anyway, if not, we can go on to, if there aren't any other comments, um, we can go on to the next. Uh, go to the next two, three and the four. Okay. Um, Joy, would you like to read? So it's 15, three, four, five? Three uh, and four. Three and four. Mm -hmm. Okay, 15, three. Confucius say, si, do you think that I am a person who study widely and memorize all of it? Si reply, it seems that way, but perhaps not. Confucius say, the answer is no. I penetrate all with one. 15.4, the master say, you, those who understand virtues, are few and far between. Okay, so I read now the Eno 15.3. The master said, Su, do you take me for one who studies a lot or study a great deal and remembers it? Zhu Kong replied, Yes. Is it not so? Confucius replied, It is not. I link all on a single thread. 15.4. The master said, Yo. There are few who recognize virtue. Yo is the given name of Zi Lu. Okay, so uh, let's not forget that when you have Zi, meaning master, it's the aristocratic name of that person. So, uh, of course, when uh, only Confucius would call his disciple by their given name, but in social life at the time, uh, the aristocrat would call them between them by their social name. And Zi Lu was the social name of Yo. I stop here. Thank you, Juan. Uh, so, Jason. Yeah, uh, the reason I put this uh, uh, only read two because I think uh, chapter three is important, and then chapter uh, five also important in my opinion. So, <clears throat> chapter three, fifteen point three, talk about si. Okay, but basically, si is zi gong, just like uh, uh, Quan said, zi gong is the social name. So, uh, or Call it, uh, you know, the, the social name. That's a good way to call it. Same as you, okay, it's Zi Lu. So Confucius, as a elder person, will not call his disciple social name. Will call his given name. So call him Si. So technically, some translation will keep us Zi Gong, but which is violate the rituals. So the master say. Ah, si. do you think that I'm a person who study widely and memorize everything? And the Zikong replied, yes, is it not so? Okay, the master said, no, my Tao is run through by a single string. So the Chinese said, yu, yi guan zi. Okay, this name has been used twice. Uh, the other one is on book four, when another disciple, which is not 
comparable with Zhi Gong. His name is Zheng Shen. He's much, much, much younger. And the Confucius even comment that Zheng Shen is Lu course, not, not, not quick response, not smart, basically. And Confucius also told him, Zheng Shen, my Dao runs through a single thread. Okay, so Confucius said this one twice, and one to his excellent, or in Confucius' point of view, uh, a high-ranking student. Okay, and uh, another time talking to his very young disciples, which Confucius probably not uh, uh, like him a lot, because Confucius, not a lot of people pay attention on this, but uh, do have some scholar talk about this. Confucius used the way to talk about the talk about Zhen Shen is used Shen Hu. Okay, this word Hu means few. Okay, kind of a little bit impatient. But when Confucius talk to Si, he say Ah Si. Okay, so that's a different tone on this one. And then we can see this Confucius thinking about he has his own uh, single straight idea and not. Every people, everybody knows, and he hope he think Zhi Gong could understand, and he may not think Zheng Shen can understand. Okay. So that's the story on the, this word, and then my Tao or my uh, my Tao is run through a single string. Okay. It's very important in Confucius thinking. Uh, chapter four, the master said. You, which is Zidu, few people know what virtue is. That, okay, I, I don't have much comment on this one. So uh, I stop here. Please. Okay, we'll open it up for uh, comments for number three and number four. Um, what with number three? Um, Three and four, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, for me, number three, okay. Go ahead, Quan. No, no, go ahead, Joe. No, I mean, um, you know, for me, it's uh, number three really focuses on uh, what it means to be knowledgeable about something, uh, you know, to truly understand something. Um, you know, it's kind of um, one of the things that actually we talk about here is uh, the depth uh, and breadth of knowledge, even at 52 Living Ideas. And that essentially, uh, when I looked at this particular passage, I see it as it, you know, as I suppose that I am one who learns many things and keeps them in memory. That's rote learning. It's really not learning it's not understanding and this comes back to some of our discussions about the idea of wisdom and knowledge and things along those lines it's just in this particular instance applied information so i i think that there's a lot to be said here uh for that particular one because um uh one of the things is that um uh you know in order to really um i don't know understand your values uh, and understand how that fits into a framework, uh, your ethics, uh, you can't just memorize things. So that's a pretty important uh, passage for uh, number three, I would say. Um, anyway, go ahead, Juan. Uh, no, you're absolutely right because uh, in the translation of Professor Eno, uh, he would make a relation with uh, an earlier paragraph 4.15, which is practically the same. And in the paragraph 4.15, Confucius would add that the single thread that is mentioned in 15.3 uh, at the earlier paragraph of 4.15, he would say that the single thread that would unite everything in my teaching is devotion when working and reciprocity. OK, so uh, it goes exactly to what you just said in the sense that you have the intellectual accumulation of information. And uh, I, here he's not rejecting that uh, when he say that uh, 
He's not someone who studies a great deal and remembers it, that he's saying no, it's not entirely true because he's Confucius and his the Confucianists in general are people who studies a lot and re remembers a lot, but that is only the first layer. But what would be the invitation to go further precisely to the moral development to be capable to be truly devoted to what you do because you are sincerely uh, embarking on your personal epistemological development precisely. I remember that in one of our past discussions, uh, we said that maybe the first question when you embark on ep epistemological uh, development or growth or journey, the first question would be, oh, the I'm sorry. The first question would be, are you truly willing to do that? And uh, that would be the most important question, the sincerity uh, of, your, uh, of your epistemological journey. And after that, you can consider other things. And uh, I stop here. Yeah, and I also think that the next comment actually goes in nicely with, uh, with number three. Uh, but let's go to Jason first. Yeah, I just like to have uh, some different opinion from the Quang uh, on this one. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, I think it's the basic uh, reading uh, between Quang and me. The difference is I, <clears throat> I don't see uh, Zheng Zi has a right answer because on the book fourteen, uh, let me share the screen on the book fourteen. We, since that's important, we can see this one. Okay, I bring up the book four. A uh, book four, right? Same situation. The master said, "Pew." Okay, Sun, my Tao is run through by a single thread. That seems like uh, Confucius kind of tell Zeng okay. And the Zeng then Confucius, Zeng Zi say, yes, he didn't further ask. Then master went out. Okay, so that's a big question, why master went out? Then Zeng Zi start to answer, the Tao of our master is nothing more than Devotion, or you want to call the sincerity and the reciprocity. So the sincerity and the uh, reciprocity is not Confucius' answer. That's Zheng Zi's answer. So uh, we are not sure Zheng Zi's answer is Confucius' idea. But another, another way to think about Zheng Zi's answer probably is consider he was very young. He, his answer could be very entry level answer. That means the first layer use Huang's uh, epistemology there. That's the first layer of end, end sincerity and uh, post uh, 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 prosperity, right? Zhong Su. That's the answer. And then to keep Confucius down. But in this chapter, uh, uh, si, which is uh, Zhi Gong, is a much higher, high level student. He see Confucius know many things, understand many things. That's his view. But Confucius is remind him all this one from the uh, sincerity and the uh, reciprocity to white knowledge, deep understand. They all one thing. That's the way I read it because nobody really talk about, uh, really understand what Confucius called the single string. But for different students, they see in the different end of Confucius uh, idea. So that's, that, that's, uh, that's my opinion. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, thanks. Uh... Uh, Jason, do you mind putting up your your translation for the passage you just referred to from book four? Oh, you want to uh, see book four? Book four? The, the passage you just referred to, I find that interesting. Uh, book four or book 15? Book four. I think you showed book four, a passage that's relevant to... Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the same thing, yeah. Well, we just read. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah. The the yeah, that's the one. Anything you want to comment? Uh so so um okay. 
So I find this interesting because I uh, thank you for making that connection, by the way. Uh, so I want to focus on this uh, this Chinese uh, word, uh, Tao. I think you translate Tao. Huh? Yeah, you know, I, try, I try not to, to uh, yeah. I, that, okay, that, that's a big subject. So go ahead. That, that's okay. But, uh, but uh, you know, for anyone, for anyone reading this, even not understanding Chinese, uh, you, you might recognize this uh, ver this uh, horizontal dash. Yeah, it's instead of the Roman numeral vertical one, the Chinese one is the horizontal. So this is one. This is a very simple stroke, right? Has a very deep meaning. Okay. This uh, is uh, this almost like uh, like the Greek thinking of oneness, one. So this is the one. Uh, so so if we go back to the verse four we just read, verse four of chapter fifteen, I believe. 15. Verse four, yeah. So yeah. So this is, I think, uh, maybe interpreted as a. Uh, the answer of uh, Confucius to the question, is there anything more, right? He's saying, look, you know, I got this oneness. That's what I have, right? I'm not rem remembering anything. I'm not learning anything, but I have this understanding of oneness that I apply to everything, right? This, so so it's kind of like uh, this is this, <laughs> Or, or my interpretation of of his would be answer to the question, isn't there anything more underneath your simple moral teaching? And so, so the oneness, this one, this Tao, or the one, yeah. But then the question is, uh, you know, what do you mean by what? What's the details of what? Can you tell us? <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you, Nick. I think you may, you you remind me of very one very important thing about one. Because and the Confucius used a string, okay, uh, yi, yi, guan zi, okay, guan, okay. So actually, Chinese word is write it vertical, and the Roman text is the horizontal, and they it does bring the different meaning of one, okay, or yi, yi, guan zi, one string. It, it's it, it has a different meaning, but I need to think about things through. But thank you for reminding me because. Chinese read vertical and they uh, probably have a different implication. And when we read it, you know, could have a different understanding. Do you have a, uh, do you want to respond to this, uh, Kwan? Uh, well, it's not really a response, it's rather a contribution to the same uh, line of uh, reflection, I would say. Because uh, uh, first, I would like to bring a small historical note before going to the philosophical uh, explanation. Let's not forget that, that this analex has been compiled for the first chapters one to seven, maybe in the last in the ten years following Confucius' death in four seventy nine BCE, right? And the fact that Zheng Zi uh, has a special place in that four point fifty, the paragraph four point fifteen. It has been because his disciple uh, after his death would give him a certain importance because let's not for, forget that Zheng Zi would create a kind of small school that is the master of that small school. That is why within the analects, sometimes you have a Zheng Zi that would appear. So I don't think that the young Zheng Zi, because I think that there is a difference of 35 or 40 years between Confucius and the Zheng Zi, I, I don't imagine the young Zheng Zi of 14 or 15 years old given that kind of answer. It has been probably invented by his disciples afterwards to give him a certain standing within the analects, okay? But that is a philological detail. I want to go back to the notion of oneness. Uh, uh, I make a jump of many centuries, okay? Chu Si, who was born in 1130 and died in 1200, was uh, uh, offer a, a principle that uh, truly intelligent activity means that there is a unity between knowledge and action. 
Okay, that I, I, I would make the hypothesis that in 15.4, when the master said, yo, there are a few who recognize virtue and 15.3 about the single thread, I would make the hypothesis that it has a link with the same thing that Socrates said the many centuries ago, that there's the unity between knowledge and action. And maybe the single thread or the virtue here or the oneness is about precisely either Socrates having said that there is a oneness between knowledge and action or according to the expression by Chu C that truly intelligent activities imply that there is an inseparability between knowledge and action, which is another way to say the same thing. I stop here. Excellent comments, Bon. Um, I just want to make one comment about number four. Uh, that's, you know, interesting. Uh, I think, you know, what, um, Confucius is essentially saying is that uh, learning virtue is difficult. <laughs> it's not necessarily something that is easy. Uh, so therefore, the, there are few that actually understand it. And I relate this relates back to something that the Nick had brought up with number 42, the idea where uh, who was saying that's it. Uh, I believe it was um, Who was who is he answering to him? Zulu. It was it. Well, it was Zulu. Actually, I looked him up too. Uh, so it was Zulu, who was answering. That's it. That's it. And it's like, well, to give yourself to other people, that's part of a virtuous act. So it's kind of you can see the parallels here. If there are very few virtuous individuals, and this one, this individual is actually saying that's it. Not that he wasn't trying to cultivate virtue, but that does demonstrate the fact that it's a rarity and, uh, you know, that it's not something certainly uh, um, easily attained or regularly practiced. That's just a thought. Are there any other thoughts on Either and, of these passages. Oh, please. Uh, if I may interrupt, and here we come back again <laughs> to what Confucius said a little bit earlier, that uh, uh, that there is a difference between giving uh, giving theoretical epistemological considerations and being right. a role models. Okay, uh, because uh, uh, and especially in the, in the context of uh, politics or of court environment. Okay. Uh, often it's not by saying a lot of things that you would uh, uh, build your position, if I may uh, be uh, very down to earth, but rather to do good things and to be unwavering in your behavior. Uh, that would you would be uh, acknowledged as something virtuous rather than uh, given long, long speeches. Even if I don't want to be too idealistic, being capable to give uh, right speeches uh, ha has a certain importance in uh, political life too, of course, or in social life in general. I stop here. Thank you, Guan. Mark. Thanks, Joseph. I don't know if you mentioned this already. I may have missed it. But the fact that in number, uh, let's see, what number is it? Number three. I think it is, yeah, that he is not asked what that single thread is. And then number four, we get the idea of virtue. I'm assuming that's Ren there, that we're supposed to implicitly understand that that is the single thread. If you ask him this question, I will say no. But that's just my opinion. I'm not going to say, you know. I, I think he's under my, because I take view as the single thread or single string as his Confucius Tao, okay, or some center principle. Okay. So I think that's which 
is could be unspokable, okay, or unexpress inexpressible. Let's put this way. So everything connect together, everything in the big picture. Yeah. Just like like the user, I hope is a proper comment about Quang. <laughs> I'm so impressed by all his number or the history of Quang he, he can memorize on this one. And I may say, ah, Quang. Yeah, he may Kwan may say, "Oh, you think I've memorized everything?" <laughs> everything, and Kwan may say, "No, okay, <laughs> just a single thread." So I believe Kwan probably have a single thread. That's why he can memorize all these numbers. So that that's an example, I would say. Jason, I'm very grateful for your command because uh, you can learn by road learning to a certain degree. Right. But when right. you have a lot of knowledge, you need to have connections between those information. If not, you would not be capable to learn more. And why? And I'm grateful not only for me, okay, because I think that nowadays people tend to look down on memory or memorization for the wrong reason. Because if you memorize, but having threads behind your memorization, it would uplift your mental capacity a lot. And I would say that uh, Jason is right to stress that's because uh, uh, we should encourage the young people to have the right kind of memorization, meaning memorization, but with understanding and not rote learning. This is actually a very important point when it comes to the intellects overall. I mean, if you think about it, the idea of ritual is obviously pretty important when it comes to the intellects. Understanding why the ritual exists is even more important. You have to know what you're honoring. And so that's uh, one of, you can appreciate ritual once you start to understand it, but otherwise you're just doing it. That's no different than rote learning. And so there you're not necessarily really considering the underlying meaning as to why you're doing it in the first place. So I think that that's, uh, um, you know, that that's something that's uh, thought of, you know, obviously uh, a common thread throughout the intellects. So very important. Before we go to the uh, uh, next chapter, uh, I think we will go to the chapter five, then we stop for today. Um, sure. Before we go that, I'd like to uh, mention one uh, 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 mention one uh, uh, topic I brought up is in book fourteen. Like my my Tao is a single uh, string, okay, uh, which in book four, Zengzi's answer about the uh, sincere sincerity and the reciprocity, right? Zhong Su, okay. is this a right answer? That's a question, okay. But I will say Quang could be. Most of people will agree with Quang's, uh, including most of scholars will agree with Quang's uh, concept, uh, the explanation. Zengzi's answer is right, and I, Jason, myself, I'm kind of like Zai Wo, you know, the kind of people keep question or like to do, like to challenge. I like look at through and they say it may not be the answer. So I, I just want to bring up this uh, 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 debate on this one, and the uh, uh, Quang for sure is on the, it, It's a question right? in the uh, academic world has a debate on this, and the Quang definitely on the majority side. I'm not on the majority. Side. I just want to bring up this fact. Yes, and I want to say that Confucius is completely successful when he's capable twenty five century later to provoke that kind of debate that we have tonight. Great. So shall we move on to number five? Yeah, let's go number five, and then we stop there. I think at number five is very, well, at least to me, I think it's important. That's why I want to separate. Yeah. Okay, so 15, um, number five. The master say um, cannot, shouldn't be considered as one who govern without um overreacting wu wei or any um 
what did he do? He um, restrained himself with courtesy and uh, correctly faced styles. Okay, so I read the Eno translation. 15.5, the master said he did nothing and all was when order. This would describe Sean, would it not? What did he do? He simply composed himself with reverence and sat facing due south. Thank you. Uh, and Jason. Chapter five. Okay. The reason I think it's important is this word, Wu Wei Er Zi. Okay. So the master said, the, say, the sage king, Sun, is the one who can govern with Wu Wei, which translate, general translates as non action. How did he do this? How, how did he do it? He simply made himself respectable and sat on the south, on the throne. Of when Chinese emperor sit on the south, on the throne, means he facing due south. So Xiangnan facing south. Okay, so here I think that's very important here. This word, Wu Wei Er Zi, okay, and I translate as uh, govern without action or govern with Wu Wei. This one is, if you only remember one phrase in the Dao De Jing, the Lao Zi, the Taoist uh, text, you probably will say Wu Wei Er Zi. That's probably the number one lesson you learn from Wu Wei Er Zi. But if you search for the text in uh, Dao De Jing, Lao Zi didn't say Wu Wei Er Zi. Okay, he has no text, no words on this. He talk about Wu Wei. So the text I bring is in chapter 37. Okay, Lao Zi said, okay, the Tao is constantly acting Wu Wei, okay, acting non-action, okay, and still nothing is left undone. Okay, that's, that's Lao Zi, Tao is teaching. If the ruler can practice this, all things can transform as they should. Okay. That's Taoist teaching. So the, we we will see the strange thing is here. The word Wu Wei Er Zi, okay, govern with Wu Wei, govern with non-action. Actually, it's Confucius said, okay, and he's talking about the Confucian sage king. He's not talking about Taoist sage king. So so here we can see the meaning of Wu Wei being viewed in Confucian school and the Taoist is very different, right? In Confucians, okay, he see, Confucians see Wu Wei or non-action as, let's put it right, as, as the end, because you have to gongji, okay? cultivate yourself or make yourself respectable, you need to do something in order to achieve Wu Wei. So in Confucius, Confucius point of view, Wu Wei or Zi or govern with Wu Wei means Wu Wei is the end because you cultivate yourself, you have a high moral standard, then your minister will be high moral, will have high moral standard. And all the people, like he said, will be easy to manage. Okay, so everything will be in order. That's Confucius' concept of Wu Wei Er Zi or govern with Wu Wei. Taoists like Lao Zi or Zhuang Zi also talk about Wu Wei Er Zi, uh, govern with Wu Wei or with non-action. In their point of view, Wu Wei is a means, not the end, because you really don't interfere the people, don't interfere the thing, okay? So you actually, so that's why Lao Zi will say, uh, 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 constantly acting Wu Wei and still, nothing is left undone because they just inter don't interfere everything and the dead, uh, everybody or every different kind of thing help survive or find out the way by themselves. So that's the key difference. I'd like to make it clear on this concept of Wu Wei, which exists in both Confucian school and 
Taoist school of Taoism, they all talk about Wu Wei, but Confucius see Wu Wei as the end because you know you cultivate yourself, you do the high moral standard, then as an emperor, you don't have to do anything else. Okay. And Taoism was thinking about Wu Wei as a means which you should be, you should practice Wu Wei, which means non-interference. And then later on another school, which is called the Ligonian school, also talk yeah. about Wu Wei Erzu, right? He talk about the interference. You see, he, he talk about govern without action, but the legalism also see Wu Wei as the end, which means if you have the reward and the punishment and the set in the rule, then as an emperor, you don't have to do anything. So I think that's, I like to bring up this one is the concept is quite important in different school, but the meaning of Wu Wei is different for different school. So I'll stop here and then uh, uh, I think this is important and then uh, uh, that's why I want to make it as a single uh, chapter. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Does anybody does anybody wish to share their comments about this passage? Daddy uh, Pond. Maybe here a funny note, because the Wu Wei has been invented by the intellectual, of course, the aristocrats, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, that uh, Jason explained perfectly that for the two political school of Confucianism and of legalism. Wu Wei is the end in the sense that the sovereign doesn't have to do anything. But if the sovereign doesn't have to do anything, it's perfect for the advisors and the ministers because the power would be in the hands of the ministers and the advisor, and the sovereign would be only a ceremonial figure. So, but beyond that uh, funny note, uh, I would say that Wu Wei. Um, <clears throat> is going back once again to the core of the mythology of Confucianism, okay? Because uh, I, I said in the past that the mythology of political Confucianism is that the perfect sovereign or the sage king, because he is perfectly uh, uh, virtuous, uh, okay? And politically is not only virtue, it's charismatic virtue, okay? A virtue that would attract people, charisma. So the Confucian mythology is that the, so, the sage or sovereign, the philosopher king, because he has charismatic virtue, he would be in the position of doing nothing precisely and just sitting on his throne facing south because the gentleman, the Junzi, knows having the virtue of goodness, meaning humanity and valor, and the Xian, the, the worthy people capable to uphold justice and beauty, would be attracted to him. And since they are capable to do things in a responsible manner, they would work for him to uphold the power of the state. Okay, And that is really the, the mythology the political mythology of Confucianism. Um, Joy, I, I really like this topic actually that I'm thinking about it because one of my favorite passages in the, in the Tao is about effortless governance, so to speak. Yes, yeah, I but, was... Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, Joy, go ahead. I interrupted you. Oh, okay. No, you, you want to, yeah, say more? Uh, no, no, I, I would wait my, for my turn. Go ahead, please. Okay. Yeah, Um. this seems like answer my question because before that, I was thinking because he say the normal man, the noble man um, remains stable when there's a difficult situation and the inferior man falls apart. So um, I, I was thinking, you know, how those two people, one is uh, have their own standard and the other one um, can do everything in the very um, maybe tough situation. How they communicate to each other. If you have a friend and uh, two different people um, hold a different standard. So I was just thinking about it. But I think this verse 
uh, Wu Wei or Zi seems like to answer my question. Sometimes you cannot do anything, you know, just people have a different standard. And uh, I was just uh, rethinking because uh, Confucius uh, emphasized that not many on uh, like uh, 15 four, um, not much has that, you know, the, the moral and the virtual similar to the Bible say, you know, everyone is a sinner. So um, it's hard for us to judge the other or, you know, to persuade the other that, you know, whatever they choose to do, something, you know, is like uh, noble or inferior. I would just think about like uh, wise or unwise because wise men, they make a choice, then they will have a, a, a probably is pretty good uh, consequences. But unwise men, they, they make a choice, then they probably, yeah, is going to have, a, um, you know, not so good uh, consequences. I was just thinking those standards is not for us to to judge the other. And uh, somehow, you know, surrounding us, maybe sometime we will fall into, you know, um, situation or, you know, we see other um, with the judgment. I don't think that is a good way to 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 do to do that or, you know, or express our attitude or you know, any of the um, name to call like a noble or inferior. I don't think, yeah, that's uh, that's wise either. So I'm just thinking, okay, Wu Wei or Zi seems like a uh, yeah, pretty good answer to my question. And I always, um, I, I really um, like the um, the sentence last week, we, we, we learned when the, um, the water is um, like a deep, and uh, how you react and the water is shallow, how you you can just, you know, make a very simple um, decision. Um, it's, it's not so difficult. So I'm thinking Confucius uh, like uh, to um, remind us um, there's a different situation and a different way to react. And the decision that we make sometimes is wise, sometimes not so wise. So maybe um, to remind us to, you know, rethink or maybe to learn from the lesson. And also this week, I feel like uh, um, Confucius and um, like address, you know, always to show ji. That means to govern ourselves, to ask ourselves or to restrain our, you know, think like uh, my desire, a lot of things to oh, just like a Western saying, like a, uh, you know, uh, help those who, um, um, God help those who help themselves. You know, you, you can, the only thing we can do, you know, to, to modify, to refine every time if we, we make some mistake and uh, to um, just to govern uh, like, a, yeah, um, to, 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 um, to the self first, then you can talk about some other um, like mother or, things to 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 expand it or to have a broader um perspective so that's what i think thank you so much for those comments joy actually i will come back to some of them in a moment i got it um i think that uh, i i want to piggyback on the mention by joy of the paragraph 14.39 that we discussed last time. And I remember all of you, the little ditty in 14.39, and that is uh, when the water is deep, go through, and when the water is shallow, just lift up your skirt, okay? And that is precisely, if you remember the vignette, the position of the Taoist, okay? Meaning that go with the flow. When the water is deep, uh, of course, you wouldn't get wet, so just go through. And when the water is shallow, you have the option of uplifting your skirts, obviously. Okay, so it's a funny way to say go with the flow. I, I, but I respectfully remind everyone Confucius' answer in that vignette, and Confucius said, "Is that so?" But it is really, it's, it's, it's not hard at all. Okay, so I, I think that. Uh, there is no absolute answer here, okay? And the answer is precisely our discussion uh, in the sense that it's part of those stuff that no one can pretend to have the absolute answer. And it has once again been the, 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 the timeless, the everlasting 
uh, opposition between the Confucianist position and the Taoist position. Okay, the Taoist position has always been for the going with the flow. But here, I think the distinction that Jason brought is very important. For the Taoist, the Wu Wei, the, the going with the flow, it's a means, it's not the end. Okay, meaning that if you have a situation that would potentially bring you into conflict or into a battle, you better go with the, the flow. Okay, meaning it's it's a mean, it's it's the the suggested attitude that the that the, the, the Taoist uh, proposed to you. For the Confucianist and the legalist, it is an end, but an end not for everyone, an end only for the sovereign. Okay, that the sovereign. Uh, uh, better don't, don't do nothing at all because he better cultivate his inner virtue because in the Confucianist metaphysics, if the sovereign cultivates his inner virtue, it would radiate in the uh, religious sense of the word, a charismatic virtue that would attract the Chunzu and the Xian. And those two categories of Chunzu and Xian when uh, when move their asses, if I may say so, mm. to serve the state because they are impressed, because they are loving that sovereign having true charismatic virtue. Okay, and I remind you that in the social organization, according to the Confucian mythology, the the sage the sovereign, meaning the philosopher king for Plato, is at the sixth line of the hexagram. The guy that is supposed to be Wu Wei, okay? Because once again, I repeat Jason perfectly important distinction. The Wu Wei in Confucianism and in legalism is only for the sovereign. It's not for everyone. And that sovereign should, or, or, something, or someone at a leadership position at any organization, okay? Let's not necessarily the sovereign of a, an empire or of a kingdom, but someone at the top of an organization should rather cultivate his inner virtue and and here is religious okay someone cultivating is cultivating his inner virtue would radiate charismatic virtue and that would bring the guy at the fifth position and at the fourth position of the hexagram the chunzu the guy capable of creativity discovery playful exploration and uh, inventivity to come to serve him. And the guy at the fourth position, the Xian, the worthy people capable to uphold justice and beauty, coming to serve him. And here, uh, uh, it's a very technical point, but uh, I stress it because Confucianism, Legalism, and Taoism are doctrines with very specific uh, understanding of reality. And I stop here for now. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Nick. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I also want to comment on this verse five. Uh, two questions. Uh, why is the follow up to the reference made by Joy and the Quan to the water? Wh which, uh, which exact citation was that? I just want to check it out. It's uh, paragraph 14.39. Ah, 39. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, and the second question is on this comparison between Confucianism and uh, Taoism and the laissez-faire uh, philosophy. I mean, Taoism has a very elaborate uh, system to explain why laissez-faire is the best policy, right? So it's not just you 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 be passive, but but it's the best to have the laissez-faire attitude uh, towards life, towards uh, politics, etc. So they have a very elaborate theory behind it. So my question is uh, does Confucio did Confucio has have an elaborate system of this conclusion. Did he did he present it somewhere, or 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 or, 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 or his uh, his elaboration got lost in history? Uh, uh, 
on what on what exactly? I, I did not hear you. A well, laissez-faire. Uh, he's asking about a laissez-faire government approach and the connection to Wuwei. Wuwei. Right. This Wuwei, this Wuwei, right? This Wuwei. Um, they're slightly different concepts, but go ahead, go on. Is that the question or uh, Jason? Go ahead. Yeah, no, let, let me. Okay, so I probably need to leave in a few minutes. Okay, but that's fine. I, I, okay. Uh, first, I probably will not agree on Taoism as a Laza veil. Okay, just veil. Okay, uh, that's a different thing. We, we, it should be different subject. In general, it would be fine to talk about uh, uh, let go this kind of. Latin law, this kind of philosophy. I will talk about next on um, Saturday, uh, Taoism, political theory. Uh, back to the next uh, question on the third, Confucius okay, has a elaborated system to bring the end of Wu Wei for the emperor. My answer is yes. Okay. Does Confucius say many things about that? I think when we read this one, I think in book 10 or something, he is talking about when you ascend, you have to bow, you have to go, this one, and he respects all the hierarchical system, all the ritual, everything, uh, music, okay. When you need to, uh, when your parents die, you have three years, mourning, all this one is his system. Right, and he has a virtue, and what's the meaning of ren? What's the meaning of bravery? Uh, zi, the wisdom. What's the meaning of bravery? So he all have all this elaborate complex system. Okay, that's Confucius. So, how does Chinese for next two thousand years to practice make it even more complicated? So. It's a bureaucratic system, right? In the Chinese government for through the year. If you look at around the world, Chinese government probably the most sophisticated government, okay, in this world uh, during the last 2000 years. It, that's all built on the Confucius idea of rituals, or you want to call it bureaucratic, okay? Bureaucratic today, probably not a good term, but during that time, old time, probably means advanced. And I heard uh, people call the Chinese uh, language called Mandarin. That's, I'm not sure it's correct or not uh, because that's original from India. Because Indians thought this guy are so bureaucratic and the Mandarin means bureaucratic. Okay, so I, I don't know if that's true or not true. So, but uh, uh, Jason, may I, may I add a, a, a detail here? Uh, the Mandarin comes from the Sanskrit word mantri, and mantri means minister. So, oh, really? <laughs> it, okay, for the Indians having the contact with the Chinese official for commercial reason, they would say that those officials will speak their language. Okay, so Mandarin for the Indians is the language of the minister, the language of the mantri, of the officials. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, but anyway, you know that that that's my answer to uh, uh, Nick. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Mark. Thanks, Joseph. I, mean, I was wondering, is Wu Wei really non-action? Because the minister, the the king, still has to sit in a certain way, and he has to be respectful or whatever word you use. So is that not implicitly a form of action? Well, I think we probably should not, okay, uh, talk about too much on the uh, Taoist uh, philosophy here. Okay, so you, your question is very valid, right? That's what it really means. Uh, probably we should announce here is uh, our plan is uh, we probably will finish uh, this year and to the probably to the end of book 15 and the beginning next year we are going to read Tao Te Ching okay, uh, uh, from chapter 1 uh, beginning from next year uh, we probably will finish this one and the, the Tao Te Ching have uh, 81 chapter 
And when we finish 81 chapter, each chapter is very short. So my plan would be probably read four chapter every section so we can have 20 uh, uh, health year, we can finish Tao Te Ching. Then we can go back to uh, Confucius and the, you know, kind of change gear. So we will have a better understanding about the meaning of Wu Wei. And the, the, that's the, the way this, we, we will say. And the key point is you act in Wu Wei, but that nothing undone. Okay, so it doesn't mean you just sit there, be lazy and do nothing, but you still have to make sure things will be done. Okay, so I think that's a key uh, essence. Yeah, and the reason why, um, just to come back really quickly, that uh, the laissez faire concept doesn't necessarily go with something like Wu Wei is that one is just solely focused on more or less market economics. Uh, and that's that's generally how laissez faire is used, but um, which is a different concept, whereas Wu Wei is more about life itself. So anyway, I'll go ahead and go on. I think that Wu Wei is very interesting as a general concept, either in Confucianism or in Taoism. Okay, I would say that Confucius gave an indirect answer to what he meant Wu Wei, because I don't remember the paragraph, but he was speaking in the vignette, he was speaking to the Duke Ling of Wei, or, or to the Duke of Qi, I'm not sure, but it's to one of the two, the Duke of Qi, probably. And uh, he said... Uh, Chun Chun Chan Chan, Fu Fu Zi Zi. Okay, meaning that the sovereign has to be the sovereign, uh, the minister has to be the minister, the father has to be the father, and the son has to be the son. Okay, that's the meaning of Chun uh, Chun Chan Chan, Fu Fu Zi Zi. And it's here uh, an example of uh, the versatility, the versatility of classical Chinese. Okay, because you you all understood that. Chun Chun is the same character but repeated twice. So the first Chun is the name, but the second Chun is the verb. Okay, so the sovereign must act as a sovereign, but it's the same character but having two different syntactic and grammatical functions. And that's the same for Chen Chen, meaning the minister, Fu Fu, the father, and Zi Zi, the son. And I think that here we can. Uh, connect that uh, uh, conversation or that vignette between uh, Confucius and the Duke of Qi with the Confucianist notion of Wu Wei, in meaning that non-action here doesn't mean that you don't do anything, but means that you don't do something that is not natural to your position <coughs> or your role. <coughs> I'm sorry, but here position of Rome is not only the hierarchical or the, or the social position of Rome, but your epistemological position of Rome too. Meaning that you have to be aware what is you are capable in that specific circumstances, and you have to be aware of the complex interaction that you have with everyone in the specific circumstances, okay? Because let's, get, let's not forget that the major quality that is promoted in Confucianism is run perfect humanity. And perfect humanity is precisely to be perfectly aware of the circumstances of the people in interaction in that circumstances and what each one will bring to the common endeavor. Okay, I'm not saying it's the only possible definition, but it's one possible definition of a run, because once again, the success of Confucius is not to give uh, a definite answer or definitive answer, but to provoke discussions 25 centuries later as we are having a discussion tonight. I thought that was very good. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I agree with your, your definition as well. It, even though it's one form of de definition, I think it captures the idea of wisdom. Um, okay, Jason. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, before I leave, uh, I let me answer Mark's question about Wu. Instead of answer what is Wu, it's too difficult. Let me answer what is not Wu, okay. which, okay. If you go back to the book 1438, okay. Uh, Zilu stay for the night at the stone gate. In the morning, the gatekeeper, the story about gatekeeper. Okay, where are you coming from? Zilu said from the school of Confucius. And the, 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 the gatekeeper said, isn't he the one who knows what cannot be done and keep doing it? Okay. The one uh, who knows what cannot be done and keep doing it. Okay. So that's a Confucius. Okay. And then I think Amang said that's a Confucian Sisyphus. Okay. So hmm. That's that's not Wu Wei, opposite of Wu Wei. So that's the answer. If you if I cannot answer what's Wu Wei, and I can answer what is not Wu Wei in these phrases. Yeah, thank you. Sometimes it's best to answer about what it's not anyway. I mean that kind of clarifies, you know. I can't te technically explain something, but I can tell you what it isn't. So um and then it helps to kind of narrow things down a little bit. Um, great, great. Uh, I will see you. I have to leave. And uh, thank you, everyone. And I'll see you uh, next week. Thank you, uh, Joe. Thank you, Kwong. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you, Jason.